this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 343, where we talk about tilt in games, including Magic the Gathering, chess, and some of its origins from pinball. In pinball, there is this awesome kind of pendulum inside the game that bounces around. And if you hit the sides of it, because you're shaking the machine too much, usually twice in a short period of time, the game just shuts off. You lose access to the flippers, you lose your bonus, and everything just goes sideways. In many competitive games, this is what happens to people during games when things start to go wrong. We are not computers. We are affected emotionally by past performance. If we're winning, we have a higher chance to win. If we're losing, we have a higher chance to lose. And being able to deal with those psychological things is extremely important in playing any game for fun or competitively. A lot of poker articles out there have been written on this topic, and it's one of the things that people blame bad play on occasionally is this emotional side to things. So it's important to realize that you need to look at it objectively, but that this affects pretty much all games out there. In chess, if you start losing, as you can see here in me playing the tactical trainer, things were not going really well. Your next tactic, your next speed chess game is likely to cause you a problem. And you need to put a psychological stop gap in play so that you don't continue on this downhill struggle. The other time that I see new players often tilt in chess is when they reach a crazy opening or some unknown position and they get really frustrated. They're like, oh, some opening rules have just been broken here, but I don't know what to do and I'm playing at a fast time control. And then they get nervous and start making mistakes. Very, very, very common. By the way, white to move in this puzzle. See if you can figure it out. Leave it in the comments. In magic, this happens more often than people realize. One of the big things people can make very subtle mistakes on and then get really mad on very early game is sequencing. If you don't know what I'm talking about for sequencing, check out Reed Duke's article over on Watsi's site. But it's really just the order in which you play cards is extremely important, especially in older formats. Whenever you've got double blue or double red cards, and you're interacting with your opponent. So take a second, look at this rug delver hand that Drew Levin suggests that you basically keep and think about which of those lands you're going to play first on the play against an unknown opponent, on the draw if you have seen something come out from your opponent, and think about the sequencing there. It's very easy to make a mistake and play the wrong land early on, walk into a stifle, or walk into inability to interact with your opponent's combo. Really, really important. For more on Rug Delver generally, I've got an hour long video up with local rug expert, James Johnson, talking about uh, this deck or very, very similar decks. The other time in Magic that I see people kind of get tilted is when one of their least favorite cards comes out, especially in Vintage, when it comes out really early on the board. I've seen Jace the Mind Sculptor dropped first turn and people get ready to scoop in response. It's not over at that point. It's going to be really difficult. But what's really important is refocusing on the game and trying to play to whatever your 3% or 5% or 10% or 20% outs are and evaluate what's going on. Don't let an amazing play by an opponent or a minor mistake by yourself end the game. If you make the mistake, you play the Scalding Tarn early, you forget to crack it on your turn, your opponent stifles it, you've actually still got a pretty good hand. Even though you made a mistake, you could come back. In chess and in magic, it's often not one mistake that kills the game, it's the second or third, that snowballing effect of making more and more mistakes after you've made a single mistake. Some things that you can do to prevent tilt from causing you huge problems is put a stop loss in place. Say, I am going to stop playing after X if things are not going well. If I lose 100 ELO points in chess, I'm gonna stop. If I lose three drafts first round playing Magic, I'm gonna stop. If I blow two arena runs to where I'm not even going three and three, more or less seven and 
three in order to go infinite, then I'm going to stop. Putting that stop in place prevents you from losing a huge amount of cash to a chess hustler or from spending way too much money on drafts when you're psychologically down. It's often a good idea to put a limit on what you're going to play and then stick to that. Additionally, though, you need to take a break in between rounds. If you're playing chess or you're playing magic, in between rounds, if you just had a tough loss, don't go make that big trade for a Black Lotus. Don't go play some speed chess and watch your game go downhill. Take a break, refocus. Now, what if this happens during a game? And this is the toughest part for people because they're stuck there in that time competition. You're playing online with Magic the Gathering, the clock is running. You're playing speed chess online, the clock is running. You're playing against somebody else and it looks like you blew game one. You're playing Miracles and Legacy. You got to start playing super fast in order to get game two and game three. You need to take a moment and put together a relaxation exercise that is going to let you lean back, refocus, and come at this anew as if it's a whole new game. At first, just try counting to 10. Doesn't work in bullet chess, but it'll work in everything else. And just breathe in, breathe out. But what I recommend is gonna sound a little bit silly, but it's build a relaxation exercise that actually takes about 30 minutes or so. Think about tensing up all the muscles in your feet and then your legs and then your upper legs and your torso and your arms and your head and relaxing those one at a time taking two or three minutes for each one and then do that same exercise a few hours later or the next day a little bit faster and a little bit faster and count down from 10 as you're doing it after a few weeks this process of getting out that tension and creating a focused zen state where you can come back in and be ready to move forward is very, very possible in a short period of time. I know this sounds a little bit crazy and a little bit woo-woo, but it really works. That ability to learn to let it go and then refocus will save you hundreds of points in games. It will save you money in drafts. It will save you significant amounts of pain and suffering. Learning to let one mistake go and move on to the next play will allow you to salvage games that before you were just cascading down a hill while playing. A little bit of further reading on this, I definitely recommend checking out Mark's article over at SCG, and there's a lot of different posts in the chess.com forums on this. Really important concept, and it's transferable to every game out there. I'm going to be doing once a month topics like this on gaming generally, what topic would you like to see that applies across many different games? Subscribe to the channel. Uh, Battle of Wits I put on here specifically because I love the flavor text on it. There is no loftier ambition than the pursuit of knowledge. It also looks like he's stomping on a chessboard. How cool is that? Thank you to all the patrons over there supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And to my sponsor, chess.com. Until next time, choose your moves wisely.